Okay, Art and Gil. Gil, this is how I tuned this wire. I played with it. Now with the length, it only took me a few tries. I played with the length and I played with the taps on the onion. I started with the 49 to 1 tap since that seemed to be what everybody seemed to use. And I started with this chunk of wire on here, this extension, for no other reason than <laughs> just because. And what I did was I wanted to tune this wire um, to the low end of 80 because I'm, I'm a QRP CW guy. So um, what I did was use the 49 to 1 tap and played with the length. And let's see if I get this. It's hard to do in a camera. Thirty-five, thirty-eight is a wonderful match. Right about where I want it. Starts climbing when you start going up the band, of course. But not terribly fast. And I talked, boy, this camera, I can't study it. I talked before about how you can change the tap and remove that, uh, that extension and cover the whole band with a real nice match. So I wondered then, I, w I wondered, well, I've got those three counterpoise wires laying on the surface of the ground that are 130 feet long. What would happen if I connect the antenna directly to the uh, coax? Bypass the union. Man, it just tickles me to death, man. So I'll show you. And if you guys are wondering why I, why the heck I've got that little piece of wire with the red on it, I'll show you. I'll try to pull this off. Because when I'm sitting here at the desk, it's easier to grab with my left hand. I can usually snag it without a problem and then reach down here and change taps as needed. So I'm connected directly to the uh, to the input of the uh, transformer. Let's take a look and see what kind of match we get there. Okay, so the antenna is connected directly to the input of the uh, UNUN effectively bypassing it and I've got the extension removed I found out that uh, if I remove the extension check this out I was hoping to get a match on the low end of 160 as a bonus watch check it out bottom of 160 a darn near perfect match and look at this you wonder well the efficiency must be horrible on 160 because I've only got three counterpoise radios laying on the surface of the ground working with the quarter wave wire check it out it's not terribly bright but I've got the colors muted on purpose because it's my desktop wallpaper on my kick-ass ThinkPad. This is 160 meters using the antenna as a quarter-wave radiator with the three counterpoise wires. Check it out. Using 5 watts on 160 meters and I've also worked with Mexico and Bermuda with QRP and the Bahamas using 100 watts. I'll show you my wallpaper for 80 meters. Okay, this is my 80 meter low sloping and fed half wave contacts <clears throat> wallpaper. All right, so the lighter color uh, is QRP. The one, uh, the only QRO one was with uh, hard to see through, no, two of them, Washington State and Iowa. Um, but using QRP, I worked Alaska. And in this last uh, CQ Worldwide DX contest, using 5 watts, I contacted those countries. 
It's unbelievable, man. That's crazy. And I thought this was going to be a, uh, a hopefully a, a suitable uh, piece of wire for listening to the old local boys on 80. I figured, you know, near NVIS antenna, hopefully it'll work for that, but I had no idea. This thing is wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Gil. Thanks, uh, Art, for hanging in there with my miserable videography. Take it easy.